Hello friends, this video on matter and magnetism part 25 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Please make sure that you have watched all the videos till part 24 before going ahead with part 25. Let us now determine the strength of magnetic field in case of a solenoid. Let us suppose this is the solenoid. Let us suppose we have a solenoid like this. And I want to calculate the magnetic field of a solenoid. So I consider a very small element. Let us suppose I take a very small element like this. Okay. The thickness of this element is dx. So I consider a small element from this solenoid. And let us suppose that I want to calculate the, elect, uh, the magnetic field inside the solenoid, right? Inside the solenoid means somewhere inside this only we, I want to calculate, let us suppose at some point P, which is at a distance X, I want to calculate the magnetic field. So the line which joins this small element with P is this line. And let us say that this angle is theta. And let us suppose that the radius of the solenoid is capital R. So this line represents the radius, right? This will represent the radius of the circular loop. So this is the radius for the solenoid. Now we will apply. Now from our previous lessons we know that for a circular coil we derived the magnetic field for a circular coil right. So for a circular coil at any point P which is at a distance X from the circular coil the strength of magnetic field is mu naught I R square divided by 2 into r square plus x square to the power 3 by 2. So this is the strength of magnetic field. Now in this case there are n turns because the solenoid is made up of n such circular coils. So because of this n turns the magnetic field will become n. This is capital N that is n number of turns mu naught i r square divided by 2 into r square plus x square to the power 3 by 2. So now for the small element dx, so for the small element dx, what would be the small amount of magnetic field? The small amount of magnetic field would be the total number of turns over this element. Now let us suppose that small n is the number of turns per unit length. So if this is the number of turns per unit length, then how many turns are there in this length dx? So number of turns in the length dx will be nothing but n into dx that is number of turns per unit length into the length over which I want to calculate the number of turns. So this will be my number of turns. Mu naught i r square divided by 2 into r square plus x square to the power 3 by 2. Let me call this equation as equation 1. Now from the figure we can say that, so from the figure which I have drawn, I can say that tan theta is equal to r by x, right? So we can say that x is equal to r cot theta. So from this we can say that dx by d theta is equal to minus r cosec square theta. Right, because d by d theta of cot theta is minus cos x square theta. So from this we can write dx is equal to minus r cos x square theta into d theta. So now we put this value of dx, we put this dx in equation 1. So what do we get? We get db is equal to minus n r cosec square theta mu naught i r square d theta divided by 2 into r square plus instead of x square I can write r square cot square theta so plus r square cot square theta to the power 3 by 2 so this becomes equal to minus n r minus n r cube mu naught i cosec square theta divided by 2 into r cube 
into cosec cube theta. So this r cube and r cube will get cancelled. This cosec square and cosec square will get cancelled. So we are left with so we are left with minus n mu naught i divided by two into cosec theta d theta. So this can be written as minus n mu naught i divided by two into sine theta d theta. So this is the small value of the magnetic field due to the small element dx. Therefore, b will be equal to integration of db. So that will be equal to integration of minus n mu naught i by 2 sine theta d theta. So this will be equal to minus n mu naught i by 2 into cos theta from theta 1 to theta 2. So we integrate this over theta from some initial theta 1 to some final theta 2. So this becomes equal to minus n mu naught i divided by 2. So here it was minus. So this will be minus cos theta 2 plus cos theta 1. Right. So now here we assume now here if the coil is infinite. So if the coil is infinite what would be your theta 1 and theta 2? What is theta 1 and theta 2 basically? Theta 1 and theta 2 is nothing but the angle which they subtend at that particular point. So if the coil is infinite, in that case your theta 1 will start theta 1 that is the initial angle. So the initial angle had to be 0 and theta 2 would be 180 degree. Therefore your B will become minus n mu naught i by 2 cos 180 minus cos 0. So this will be equal to minus n mu naught i by 2 into minus 2. So this will get cancelled. Therefore you get magnetic field is equal to n mu naught i. So please make a note of this point here that this n here does not represent total number of turns. This is the number of turns per unit length. So please make a note of this because many a times people make mistake. They think that n mu naught i where n is the number of turns. But here n is not the number of turns. It is the number of turns per unit length. Right. So I hope it is clear to you now. Please make a note of this theta 1 and theta 2. Sometimes you don't understand this. So please have a look at the figure. What is theta 1 and theta 2? Theta 1 is nothing but the angle which this small element will extend will ex subtend at the point where we want to calculate the magnetic field. So now if this wire is infinite that means this theta will start from this end which will be very far. Now as the distance will increase this side theta will decrease. So even if it goes to infinity theta can be 0. It cannot be less than 0 right. So if this side if it is infinity so theta will be 0. Similarly this side it is infinity that means I mean let us suppose if the if dx starts from here when dx is here let us suppose theta is 0 as it starts coming this side theta keeps increasing it becomes theta when it reaches dx again dx keeps shifting this side theta keeps increasing 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 and when it goes to infinity the maximum theta can be 180 degree it cannot go beyond this so that is why for infinite solenoid we have taken theta 1 as 0 and theta 2 as 180 degrees right okay so this is your magnetic field inside the solenoid now what is the magnetic field outside the solenoid now a solenoid is considered ideal if it does not produce any magnetic field just outside the solenoid when current is flowing through it. So we assume that the magnetic, so we assume the ideal scenario, right? However, in real life, it is not like that. There is some magnetic field even just outside the solenoid. But for an ideal solenoid, what happens in case of ideal solenoid? Magnetic field just outside is equal to zero. So magnetic field just outside the solenoid when current is flowing through it is zero. In that case we say that the solenoid is an ideal solenoid. Right. 
so that is all about solenoid so you understood what is solenoid what was the need to construct a solenoid what are the practical uses of solenoid and how do we determine the magnetic field of a solenoid so till now we talked about the uh, magnitude of the magnetic field in a solenoid what about the direction well when it comes to direction the rule will still remain the same we will still apply the right hand thumb rule the same rule which we applied in case of circular loop now let us suppose in this case if current is flowing in this direction then you take all the four fingers and curl them in the direction of current you all curl all the four fingers like this in the direction of current as you see here in that case your thumb will point in this direction so that means the magnetic field is in this direction and current is in this direction right so whenever you have the, it is the same thing as in case of a circular loop the direction of current is represented by folding your fingers in that direction and the direction of your thumb will tell us the direction of the magnetic field thank you please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos try free online tests get the best quality study materials study from the best tutors and mentors and much more thank you once again